Yeah, I'm back with another Gladiator deck, and this might be the most fun one yet, although I definitely don't think it's the strongest one yet, because this time around, I'm not actually trying to turn off Gladiator's effect. Before, I was uh, canceling it with Zero or Cosmo or uh, effectively turning it off by locking up the opponent's side of the board. There was no space to summon anything. This time around, we're trying to buff up the Gladiator's stats so that even after he goes off, the likelihood of him backfiring is notably smaller. So we have in here the sort of Wakanda buff crew trio, even a Shuri fits into the mix. We've got Forge as another way to buff up your Gladiator. We've also got another card that benefits from said buffs with Lady Deathstrike. This actually destroying things on board can be amazing when it hits a Dracula or various small little cards that are in your way. And then we've also got cards that benefit from buffs uh, because of course they are able to duplicate those stats. So Brood and Mr. Sinister just become these nice onboard threats and then various complementary pieces in this deck uh, to help, all of which in one way or another benefit from having those nice stat buffs. Now, uh, I do think this is probably the most fun Gladiator deck I've played so far. Just a lot of unusual cards in here, different gameplay patterns than you normally see, but it's also probably the worst I've played so far because Gladiator backfires sometimes in this deck. Even if you push his stats up, you can pull an Infinite and feel really, really bad about the Gladiator in this case. So it did sort of reinforce my expectation that Gladiator played straight up, even if you buff him, doesn't feel nearly as good as when you can be sure that you're turning off that downside and don't accidentally summon something gigantic for your opponent. So I had a lot of really near misses with this deck. So many games where I just barely lost that were really fun. And I'm going to include a number of those in this video, probably more losses than normal because so many good games were just really, really tight losses. Um, but also, of course, some wins as well. Just doing some fun, crazy stuff here on the back of Lady Deathstrike in particular was really, really enjoyable in this list alongside Gladiator. So I think this deck's awesome. Uh, I don't recommend you try to climb with this one necessarily. You'd probably do OK if you're just really looking to have some fun. But this one's more about showcasing what the card can and can't do in certain environments like this one, which uh, uh, there's a lot of can and can't do in this in this video, as you're going to see. Uh, sadly, this Nico is really bad for the, for the Wrath. Shoot, uh, it's not what we want. We don't want to move the Sinister out. I think we can probably play the Sinister left. I'm not too distraught about that. Valley of the Hand is actually pretty interesting for this pair. Uh, we might want to be a little careful. Yeah, I honestly might just rip the Gladiator on three. It's, uh, you know, the, the, kind of risky in a Wrath if you think they're going to get a lot of cards out of it or something, but, um, oh, bro, Shuri... Comertage is so crazy. Shuri Comertage Gladiator is like really funny. <laughs> I don't know if it's any good, but it's really funny. I probably just play the Captain Marvel here though to get the raft, right? I, I like that it doesn't lock us in. We still have quite a bit of power committed here. It's nice. Uh, we got the swarm. It's dead. Cool. Okay. Discard deck, it seems. Apoc naturally gone twice here, so he's really big, which is really tough for uh, like a Dracula roll. They have it. We're gonna have a hard time beating any Dracula location. Forge is kind of almost equally uh, useful, but I really like the Marvel. I do like the buffed Marvel a ton though. The opponent has not gone to Raft at all. So could I maybe just go well, Shuri Death Strikes weird. I gotta, I gotta play here on four. It's like Shuri Marvel, and I could forge here, but that's really bad. I could also just do like this, and then Marvel on. No, I don't know, man. This is an awkward line. I think we'll just play it straight up, but it's kind of awkward. Oh, Odin! Oh my God, Odin, dude! Oh, I'm glad they went Dracula mid because that's actually kind of the least interesting place to me. I feel like. After you play your next card here, double this card's power. Am I insane or is this like a million power? And then I can just death strike the Dracula mid. Oh my God, dude. I'm not insane, right? This is like a million power. <laughs> and I forgot death strike's a perfect answer to Dracula. This, this, is, this has got to be the most insane. This has got to be the most insane Nico I've ever played. 
I don't know. This is crazy, dude. Odin's big too, I guess, isn't he? I just realized how big Odin is. Odin has got to be the sickest card we've ever seen. Oh my god, dude. <laughs> oh wait, no, the forge hits the Nico. Wait, why doesn't... Oh, oh no! I, it's gonna be the Death Strike that gets hit, you idiot! What am I saying? It's gonna be the Death Strike that gets hit. <laughs> that Apoch is so big, dude. But I'm killing the Dracula. Oh, and the Swarm goes back, too. Oh my god, dude. I forgot it's the Forge again. Dude, this is the sickest game I've ever played. <laughs> this is the craziest game, dude. Oh my god, dude. They they don't have a way to win, so I hope they don't retreat. I'd love to see this Death Strike to just really rub it in. I, they fist bumped. I got a fist bump back. Um, This is hilarious, dude. How big is this freaking Death Strike, dude? 12? Cool. See you, Dracula. Oh, they just played it. Oh, that's funny. That's smart, actually. That's smart, because you got the guaranteed win uh, left. I guess, you know, you know, maybe you're, maybe you're expecting the Death Strike. I don't know, but dude, this is the craziest Nico I've ever seen. <laughs> oh, no, such an obscene eye roll. <laughs> Crazy. Double discard's power? Mm, no. Hand buff, hand buff, hand buff, brood is kind of a cool idea. Savage land. I feel like these two locations always go together. I don't know what it is. Am I losing my mind? I just feel like that's true. I feel like I see these together all the time. Black Widows by... I mean, weirdly enough with cloning vats, I may not even ever need to play that. At the same time, it probably doesn't really hurt to play it. Uh, Nico plus Widows by, in fact, is actually... Pretty freaking cool. I get a, a, a demon that I can just play every single turn, which is really efficient. Uh, you don't expect Black Widow decks to typically have a lot of uh, like Killmonger action. So I think that'd be okay. They're gonna try to, um, I think they're gonna try to like clog me up here. I can actually just stop that now. They may move it elsewhere because they're scared, but the thing is, this is so much power already. I'm not even sure I'm worried about that. It's really just maybe the next one. I did this in the wrong order, by the way. I think I want the demons buffed specifically. We could also just use a death strike to, as long as I, well, yeah, if I did it next turn, we could absolutely just death strike. Yeah, that's true. Um, because if they send another green goblin there, Hear me out. We're gonna clog this up. I think they're gonna send the goblin here this time. I think they, they I think the thing, you know, he thinks I'm gonna go there. I'm just gonna lock this up. It's still a ton of power, like we talked about. I'm gonna, I'm gonna Lady Death Strike left. If the green goblin left, that's fine. We'll just Lady Death Strike. That's no big deal. Um, they Black Widow again. That's totally fine too. We don't care. Just in case they decided not to goblin again, they got, they got scared, man. They got scared, dude. Oh, this actually just adds this back to hand, so it doesn't really do anything right. It's kind of funny. Yeah, this feels like Brood right plus Gladiator left maybe next turn. Something like that. We're covered really well here. So we should have space here still after whatever this is. It's not two goblins or something, is it? Ooh. Hazmat's kind of scary. I believe this order's wrong. They could have debuffed this rock, right? This kills the Luke Cage. Is that right? Then they're debuffed. I think it does, right? Because she counts as 10. This is worth plus four on the back. I think so. I mean, they may not be expecting this. I think she counts as 10 when she goes off, right? Yeah, nice. Nice. Let's go. Did they play the second hazmat? the question, really, right? I think they got the order right this time. But, uh... They're also now suffering the debuffs, so. Uh, cool, dude. Yeah, big. That Luke Cage removed, like, a ridiculous amount of power, right? It's crazy strong. They knew I had the Death Strike, too, so maybe they just didn't think I'd see that or didn't think about it. Yeah. Cool game, dude. Death Strike owning. Ah, they're mad! <laughs> nah, they're mad. Yeah, Death Strike's really good against junk decks, so. Ooh, cloning vats. Second straight game. Cool. Um, yeah, I mean... Not looking at Shuri too closely this game. Nico, that was the uh, add a copy to hand. Okay.
what cloning vats does as well, you know? I don't think I need multiples of these. Let's just put this in Mojo World. It's, you know, diminishing returns over the course of a game, of course, number one. Number two, I don't have time to play it anyway, so. That's pretty cool. A lot of Ant-Mans, dude. Two extra Ant-Mans, right? Spicy. It's gonna be a very good Lady Deathstrike spot. Two of these, these are more immediate on their returns, right? Which is kind of nice. You could also just start stacking up forges as well, like forge, whatever you buff. Like, the, you know, the gladiator is going to be 8, plus 2 is 10, and I'll get a 10 power gladiator. And I could get another forge for it too, technically. Nico again. Oh my god, there's all Ant-Mans, dude. Where is my Killmonger? So if I did something like this, right, another forge and another big gladiator. It's like a lot of power. And the forge is actually pretty decently sized himself. The next forge I could also technically play there if I'm confident in my amount of power output, but I don't know that I am. I also need to start stacking in a Stark Tower a little bit too, so that's something, another thing we need to think about. On curve next turn, like Forge plus Gladiator is not very good. Maybe it would be Forge plus Iron Lad and you hope to hit a Brood? Or maybe a Death Strike? Oh, the Kazar would be insane Death Strike target too. That would be sick. What's this gonna be? It's gotta be big. There's nothing in this deck big enough. <laughs> Excuse me? <laughs> it's Dracula Zoo, dude. That's crazy. I love it. I put a list up, uh, like, what, a week or two ago? Maybe it's my list? Did I make that list or did I play somebody else's list? I don't remember. But the list I spotlighted anyway. <sighs> I know I made another list with Strong Guy shortly after that, but I don't think I made a video on it. Oh, Dracula would be another insanely cool freaking uh, Death Strike target, dude. Come on, Death Strike one time. Come on, dude, one time. We're such happy people, dude. That's so insane. The left is definitely gone. Like the thing now is just trying to win mid, um, which man, they're revealing first, <sighs> dude. I... It's like this deck often has something like Red Skull or like, Giganto can't be played. We know the Dracula is gone. Like a Red Skull plus a one drop here, this would lose because Red Skull is too big. So I, I, I think, I, I think we just have to go for the maximum, like four cards and just hope we're big enough because they're kind of small on the front end here. Are they going to be big enough on the back end, especially without the, now also the Iron Lad here is technically exposed as well because like a Red Skull would be 14 to 13. <sighs> But I just, uh, they have Titania plus Red Skull as well. I don't really think we can, uh, if they have Red Skull, I think we just lose basically is the math. I think they're going to go mid. Okay. Zero's fine. Red Skull? Yeah. Are we, I don't think we're big enough, right? That's too big. 10 is not enough to keep up with Red Skull. Ant-Man plus Red Skull. Yeah. So see, the, the Death Strike just wouldn't have beat Red Skull face up. Uh, Death Strike left just loses the infinite. I mean, that's a crazy game, right? We, we win this, I think, a vast majority of the time if we don't hit an infinite. There's just no other way for me to add more power here while still getting to four. Remember, we have to get to four for Mojo World, so. If Okoye was six or had a way to play a one drop behind Death Strike, I think we could have won this that way. Like, if I had a Nico to drop in in the back, right? So you Death Strike away these three, then you have the Nico behind. All right, uh, yeah, Jeff, okay, Death Strike's interesting. Uh, we could keep that Nebula in check and then Death Strike, yeah, that'd be fun. Oh, okay, cool bonus for the Jeff we got randomly, nice. Uh, oh, Nico would have been good too, actually, pretty cool. Maybe I should have played the Nico and then, like, sinister or something. It's not really that, that exciting, I guess, but it's okay. Uh, Forge Sinister makes a little more sense. Uh, yeah. Well, I don't know. We're thinking about playing that Death Strike we talked about, right? Maybe we, um, yeah, maybe we put the bad cards there. Or maybe just no cards there? Are we okay with it occupying a spot with Forge? We kind of like leaving something open for, for Orca, so I'm actually going to do this, yeah. Sorry for the <laughs> indecision here, but we'll call it refinement, not indecision, right? <laughs> We're getting smarter. Uh... All right, so Jeff plus Sinister's pretty good start mid already. Like, that's a good core package. Death Strike to do some cool stuff left. 
We actually don't have to play to the death strike spot now because, or excuse me, the nebula spot because that'll be three into four. So we could probably just do Iron Lad here, Orca right, Death Strike left, and hope for the best. Uh, we got to move Jeff mid. So we are playing the Orca. Right's the place for it for sure. What do we want this to hit? I guess like Captain Marvel. Nakia is okay. Uh, Shuri's kind of wasted. Captain Marvel's great. Okay, that just covers. Yeah, that's nice. It's just a little coverage. So Nebula gets eaten. I mean, I, I have kind of walked us down this path pretty lockstep i hope we still think it's right but i like that it forces the opponent to commit uh-oh uh-oh oh Oh, even better bonus freebie okay it's like so close mid though is the thing it's scary so close mid but i do like that orca flips right pretty uh pretty fully 16 power here we're still ahead mid so they they really have to cover all three spaces this is tough for them this is not easy this doesn't seem trivial to me Doctor Doom is actually just... Oh no, Captain Marvel saves us! Yes, I forgot! Yes, let's freaking go, dude! I thought we were gonna lose, but we're geniuses! She couldn't move right, so importantly... Or, you know, it, Iron Lad couldn't move right. So that was pretty nice. Huh. Yeah, nice, dude. I bet they thought this was gonna cover. The Orca at 16, though, doing just enough. That's cool, dude. Great game! Perfect game, actually. Yeah, nice. Hamertage. Okay, that can be crazy good for us. Insane on Shuri, insane on Forge, sometimes insane on Nico. Uh, insane on Nakia, of course. That's just a good start. Plus, who to everybody is not bad at all. Oh, their hand's just full of cart, full of stones. Just all the stones. <laughs> all right. I don't think we ripped the Mr. Sinister early. Oh my god, this, this hand buff the hand is nuts. All right, I thought about putting an Absorbing Man in this deck. It seems, you know, it's good with Brood sometimes, but eh, just, I don't know. The Brood, I, I want to I wanna be able to buff pre-play, not post-play. Like some Brood decks, you don't have Patriot, they can buff the Brood afterwards. Surfer, you can buff the Brood afterwards. This deck's more about buffing the, buffing the Brood beforehand, which gives you l less time to play the Absorbing Man, because, you know, if you play like Nakia on three, Brood on four, Absorbing Man on five, that's a weird curve, basically. So, you know. Death Strike does murder the stones, so that's interesting. Uh, man, they are just, they, they, looks like to me they're gonna murder their own stones as well, to be honest. Uh, dude, Death Strike murders this too, which is really nice. What are they, are they gonna play a card here this turn? Maybe like a kitty or something? I could Gladiator, I mean, I, I guess it usually gets destroyed if I Gladiator. It's kind of funny though, because I would burn through so much of their deck. I mean, they have so many cards in deck, they don't really do anything. Uh, plus two power, it's after, so less good with Brood. Iron Lad could hit Shuri, Okoye, or Forge. I mean, Forge would be kind of insanely busted. Shuri is probably just wasted though. I don't, I mean, I guess maybe even like a Mr. Sinister is not bad though. Just like eight is pretty good. So maybe not. Captain Marvel's okay. Orca's not really very useful. Okoye, probably not very useful. Uh, it doesn't it doesn't hurt on the Lady Deathstrike if I decide to go left on Deathstrike, though, so that's good. Brood's still available elsewhere. Oh, it's just the Jeff, okay. This actually does eat the Jeff if they decide to wait too long. Valley of the Hand, though, we need to be mindful, brings stuff back if I Deathstrike this turn. I mean, they usually move the Jeff this turn, right? Oh, it's just Orca, that's kind of sad. They usually move the Jeff this turn because you want to get another Elsa buff. So I think we might see uh, like a uh, Professor X played like mid or right. In which case I try to win with either Orca or probably more realistically Brood plus Gladiator. They did snap. And there's some pretty strong final turns here. I'm, I'm going to try this still and see how it feels. Destroying the Elsa matters elsewhere if they if they do wait to, to fill, which sometimes they do on that, you know. Is this Professor X? Oh, just the blue marble. That would also have been a fantastic Lady Deathstrike target, to be honest. Pretty fantastic option, too. Oh my god, I didn't even think about this! I'm an actual genius! The brood's up to five! Bro, 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 bro. Hear me out. This is just 20 out of nowhere. 
This is 14, 24, 26 with only one space available. There is zero chance we lose this, right? What could we lose to? Eliath? We're moving. Do we beat Eliath though? No, because we only have 14, 16. Oh, we do. If it would be a tie, 16 to 16. I could do. Gladiator writes only 12 though. No, this is fine. We. Oh, Eliath left beats me though, because I'm only. Well, no. Yeah, they're revealing first. Yeah, Eliath left does does. Well, they don't think it does, because I if I don't move, it doesn't beat me. It only beats me if I don't move. Oh, did they really play it left? Oh, it's just Thanos. We. Oh no, he's 21. No. No! Be something that ruins him somehow. I don't know how. No, it doesn't matter. Oh my god, he's 21, bro. I should have just went here for 15, maybe. Oh, it's not 15 because the soul stone. Bro, he's 21 with the blue marvel. There's only three of these right, and they're each only four. It's only 12 power right. Nakia was two. It would be 14 for the tie, but we'd lose a tiebreaker. Could have like maybe left, you know, something left. That feels weird because you just waste a space. I mean, we had 14 there. We could have just played the gladiator left and then, you know, played the broods mid. But again, you, you get the free brood by playing on Comertage. Ah, man, that's a tough game. That's a really tough game. All right. So yeah, we like, we do like seeing Okoye early, but unfortunately we have Sinister and Brood in hand. Now that's a, they are still good at Death's Domain, so maybe maybe just fine and we can use you know brood or um a nico for instance to still buff those uh for that upside uh, more immediately koye nakia would be good too still actually oh that's good for brood as well wow uh double this card's power a little less interesting maybe we put the mr sinister here for now we still have like a marvel that can cover i think brood makes a lot of sense in dc so let's try that uh even just two here can be a surprising amount of power that catches people off guard iron lad next turn captain marvel would be okay certainly gladiator and lady death strike could be fine maybe not great depending on where they go Captain America, what? Okay, now that is actually a bit of a shocker. Oh, oh, after you play your next card, give it plus two powers. So that's actually perfect here for the brood. Shuri does the same thing basically, but... Oh wait, this is after though, isn't it? I don't think it works like Forge. This is give the next card. This is after. I don't think it works the same. So, you know, you, you could also Shuri into the brood, but that seems kind of bad too. I, I think Shuri into Iron Lad's pretty cool. And then maybe we just use um, Marvel or Brood left. Thought I caught myself on the Nico. It, is, it doesn't work exactly like Forge. Oh, they're on Captain Marvel. Okay, cool. We can do that too. Do we just want to Captain Marvel double then? Ah, also Forge Brood is pretty sick. Okay. Why is she animating on both? It's kind of wild. Uh, we do need some space. We could put Forge over here because we may want to play a card here, right? That actually matters and is, is perhaps bigger than Forge. So yeah, let's just throw Forge away there. Captain Marvel's contesting their Captain Marvel. Brood puts a ton of power right because of DC and just because it'll be buffed. Uh, and then hopefully we find, you know, three drop to play, like Gladiator maybe. Um, Nico, worst case, I guess. Claw. Ooh. Orca, huh? Is Brood going to be enough here, actually? He's going to four. Um, That's 12 plus another six is 18. I mean, it's kind of enough, but not, not really technically. It's also only ties the claw. Now that said, their Captain Marvel's moving away from here. Mine's moving away from here. So that probably gives us the advantage, right? Onslaught's a little, little wacky, maybe. Be a bit of a problem. But I don't know. Still with the Captain Marvel, I think we might be okay. Because Captain Marvel wants to move. Um, oh, well, it doesn't even matter. We're just fine mid if, yeah, okay. This this also solves it, yeah. <laughs> Same difference. If the Marvel's moved, uh, we'd be fine too. Yeah, the Broodlings on DC just made the big difference. Sinister Clone kind of for free. Yeah, okay, cool, weird game. Not the strongest game, but it worked. Oh, Koige early, nice. And um, Sinister and Brood 
both in deck currently, which is fantastic. Uh, we could cheese out some stuff. Deathstrike's gonna murder a bunch of gins. That's funny. 9.99 ongoing loser taking out the trash. <laughs> so I was thinking about this the other day, like, um, you know, we paid $10 for the season pass card in Marvel Snap. What do you guys think would be a good price if you just, like, if you just paid for every card in a card game? Like, if you just, like, you know, like, imagine a Netflix subscription, but instead of getting access to, like, you know, the, the library of Netflix uh, movies and, and TV shows, you just get access to every card in a card game. Like, what would you be willing to pay, like, a monthly fee? And, and maybe even if, like, you, if you did pay, like, you just anything released that month or something you just get it forever right and maybe maybe you don't have to upkeep your subscription forever or something but twenty dollars thirty dollars is that too much ten dollars the right price and, you know for like hearthstone or marvel snap we theoretically spend a lot more than that to get access to cards just wondering what the kind of default or baseline feels good at Ooh, doc ock gone okay sinister hit that's not bad uh the hand buff is cool for us it was a shame we didn't hit the sinister or the brood for it they're not happy about the sokovia it would seem we might want to keep a spot open for orca just like how much do i want to play these gins i can probably clear them out left the titania is kind of beneficial for me but also i want to kill their jeff so maybe we just clear it out left so i don't have a board space problem because like orca wants to go here iron lad's gonna need to support as well i don't know we'll we'll see i guess we'll see we are so good with Wakanda Embassy and kind of missed it. Oh, so Super Scroll is an Orca play, but notably, uh, he will not be the only card in his location. So I don't think that's a problem for us necessarily. Uh, do we just destroy everything left? It hits a Jeff, which is good. Oh, I didn't know she flashed these red. I feel like that's maybe new. I don't know if I remember that happening before. <sighs> Forge into like an Iron Lad is kind of cool. Man, imagine if that hit Brood. Jeez, that'd be cool. Uh, I almost wish I could play the Forge left, but I don't know. Am I am I really that worried about this Orca? Is another thing like I don't know. Like part of me wants to just put some power down, you know? Like Orca's a six eleven. Maybe that's just good enough, sort of thing. I don't think we need the Death Strike to be bigger, do we? Do we want to push the Death Strike to eight? Because it's definitely a possibility. Uh, we're revealing first, so it doesn't- we don't need to. We don't need to. Yeah, I don't know, man. I'm gonna spread this out. It's- it's debatable. Like, we're definitely throwing the Orca here a little bit, but... Oh, they moved the Jeff? Are you kidding me, bro? Why would you move it this turn? And uh, this is not me accusing of stream sniping, by the way, because I'm not- I'm not streaming. <laughs> Unless they have a feed directly into my house. Uh, no, no, no accusations being made. Uh, just crazy timing. Oh, I see why. Okay. Well, still though, I guess we kind of uh, saved ourselves a little bit of a problem here because they were hoping to like lock me up and I absolutely did not suffer the lockdown consequences there. So eh, kind of a nice backup, I guess. Gladiator. Oh. Gladiator plus Iron Lad? It's kind of cool. Could even put a Jin in too, so I have like the chance to play something alongside Orca, maybe. Alright, man. Gladiator for 10 is gonna destroy something because they already have a Doc Ock. They don't have any bigger cards. There's just like zero chance. Oh, that Green Goblin screws me left. That's annoying. I just played the Jin there. Jin and I mean they may still have to put power there though, honestly. Like it looks to me like they let's see how big this is. Yeah, okay, just the Jin. So they do have to commit a card, which is kind of nice for us. It's not free for them, you know. Gladiator hits uh Black Widow. Are you kidding me, dude? Gladiator. Dude, you suck. Shuri? Okay. I mean yeah, I, I, I think it's pretty simply Orca right. That's the, where we're closest. And then maybe we just kind of hope they can't get their mid and left because they have to do both. I mean, they have a billion power, so... Or excuse me, a, a billion energy. Um, and, and five cards in hand, but I, I guess a lot of them are Jin. So, like, are they going to be strong enough to contest, you know, basically 10 power here? It seems kind of impossible. Can they do it? Like, we already saw their big 10 power card gone. I don't know what they'd have. Like, their big power might be like a hobgoblin, but that's not going to connect. 
<laughs> I mean a very big orca. Looks like a Shang-Chi could actually wreck me, I guess, since we're revealing first. Although if they spent the energy on Shang-Chi, I mean that's kind of the scenario like I guess like a Shang-Chi right and something small left is definitely viable. Dude, Lady Deathstrike would have been so good against this junk plan too. We didn't even like we played her, I guess, in hindsight a little early. Oh, they snapped. Oh, they're feeling good. Okay. I'm curious. Yeah, let's see, man. I'll take some cubes to see what's up. I am intrigued. Uh, maybe it's a bluff snap. There we go. Okay. A ton of cards dumped. Uh, oh, did this not work? Oh, maybe because the gladiator came down after. Oh, it doesn't really matter, I guess. The size should still be sufficient. There's the debris. What is mid that's big enough? And is it a Shang-Chi? Ah, the Shang-Chi. Yeah, that'll do it. Yeah, that's what we talked about, right? It's exactly the right size. Small stuff left and Shang-Chi right. As teased. Um, yeah, I didn't really have a play around that. I mean, th they got kind of lucky. Because the, 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 the Shuri didn't actually connect, which I actually thought it was too, but... Um, so, if I just played any, like, literally a three-power card, you know, if it hadn't been an organically shang chi -able target, which it was very unlikely to be, I would argue. Pretty lucky, honestly. The Jeff move was lucky too, man. They got lucky a couple times. All right, uh, drawing really close deck. I got a pretty interesting little set. Gladiator still pulls from their base deck as far as I understand. Uh, oh, it's a high Evo deck. Okay, cool. Do we get any good affliction cards? Lady Deathstrike left is currently looking amazing, but it depends on that sunspot scaling. Although Shuri Deathstrike probably works, to be honest. Ooh, that's good too, I feel like. Dang, there's some good cards here. Um, all right, we're gonna rip the Gladiator here. I trust, we're gonna go Shuri Deathstrike left. Trust the Gladiator just always works. It definitely never hits the Hulk. Never, ever. Not one time does it hit the Hulk. Oh, that actually kind of helps me a little bit. It never hits the Hulk. Perfect, that's fine. Uh, that's actually a bad draw out of their deck that I get to benefit from now. That's cool. Thank you. Rogue, probably not worth it. I gotta have to, I'm gonna have to decide here depending on how big this Sunspot gets. Do I trust the Death Strike or do I just go for the A-Bomb? Or arguably even the Thing. A-Bomb is worth plus six over the thing after Shuri though, so thing's only negative three. I mean, it does it does debuff the A-bomb or, or discount the A-bomb for turn six though, so that's that's kind of worth something, I guess. Hmm. Okay. Another afflicted card. He's now three. This afflicts two, so he costs one. It's pretty good. That that scorpion debuff though does hit this thing extra hard, which is kind of unfortunate. Oh, another, another debuff. Nice. So Abomination is super cheap. Oh, Hazmat! Bro, my A-bomb is free. Let's go. Uh, Death Strike? Um, I don't know, man. I guess Captain Marvel currently just contests mid really well, right? Bro, are you kidding me with this Hazmat right now? Yeah, we are just farming, dude. <laughs> it's great playing a good deck, dude. What do you know? That went perfectly. I haven't played high Evo in a long time. Does it always feel that good? That's what I'm missing out on right now.